<clears throat> I am. Okay, so welcome everybody to the Tuesday, September 15th, 2020, uh, Town of Brookfield Municipal Building Committee regular meeting. Um, we'll start with the approval of the August 18th minutes. So moved. Second. Any discussion or corrections on the minutes as submitted? The only commentary I have is, is that I was late for the start of the meeting. I came in about, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes into the meeting. So if you want to note that, great. If you don't want to note it, it says I was present. I was present. I was just late. All right, Catherine, you just want to note that on the, uh, the minutes? Sure. All right, so... Thank you. All those in favor of approving the minutes with the modifications said no, Rob was late. Aye. 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 So moved. Okay, new school project. We have Eddie Wadowski and Jeff Wazinski here from Tecton Architects, as well as, was Darren on? No. no we have Brad on um, from engineering. Try to do it again. So Jeff, would you uh, lead us off? And we also have uh, Matt Sanford from Malone McBroom. Oh, there it is. Okay, yep, yeah, there's Matt. Yep. Eddie, are you sharing your screen to show the uh, run through? Uh, I will do that right now. Okay. You can you can run through and then we can stop once we get to in the wetlands and we can have a discussion there. Sure, absolutely. Well, there's really only one point before that, and that is the water gas main coordination. So we understand that the uh, water main was not voted on at the uh, September 9th meeting. The Board of Finance is asking for some additional information, and Greg Dimbowski is currently working with Steve Dunn to get the Board of Finance what they're looking for. So, how is that impacting our schedule and approval process? Um, if we can get it on the next meeting, it shouldn't have an effect. If it uh, goes further, that's going to eat into our ability to report to the state of Connecticut that we have a way of getting water to the site. Will they force us then to go to wells to serve the school site? Yes, if, if we are not able to bring public water, yes, we would need to go down the route of uh, installing new wells and the associated equipment on site. All right, so the impact wouldn't be so much to the school, but it would be to the detriment of the town. Correct. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yes, thanks for clarifying. Okay. So, uh, Wetlands, Jeff, do you want to? Sure. Yeah, I can give a, a bit of an update. Um, we um, made our way through several different wetlands meetings um last night we had um there was an inland wetland meeting down here anything they they had to close the public hearing um at the previous meeting so not last night but the the meeting before um so all testimony related to um the application was submitted so you could we really couldn't speak uh, on behalf of the applicant so it was really just deliberations amongst the um, commission um I would encourage you know the group as as I send out uh, email correspondence uh, previously. Uh, some have attended and have listened to some of the um, uh, deliberations, but um, I would encourage the the folks listening tonight to to go back to um, the previous two meetings to listen to basically the conclusion of the public hearing because I think that's important. Um, we we made several modifications, and I'm not a, a, a wetlands and thinning expert. That's why we have um, Matt Sanford to speak speak to some of the details should you have questions. But over that process, the submission process, um, we made several uh, modifications to the site plan to address uh, numerous comments. They, the, the commission hired three um, independent um, experts, if you will, um, most of them are professional engineers or wetland soil scientists. Um, and they all reviewed the documentation and, and commented on um, our application and our Malona McBroom responded, you know, this went back and forth several times. Um, and um, at the last, basically the last um, meeting of the public hearing, um, we believe that we had 
general consensus from, from the experts, their experts, the three independent experts that we satisfied all of their, their um, requirements. Um, so we, I think we, we did um, the best we could as far as um, responding to all their, their comments. Um, but at last night, and again, that was just the deliberations amongst the commission themselves, it, it didn't sound all that positive um, as far as their willingness to, to um, accept the application or approve the application. So um, at this point, we cannot modify the application um, um, or add <coughs> alternates to um, what we proposed. Um, really, that would have to come from the commission as a as a as a condition of either a, an approval or a denial. So, um, the last technical piece of the update that I wanted to give was that um, technically the the time had expired at last evening's meeting, uh, and they asked for an extension. And um, I spoke up uh, on behalf of the applicant, the town, and granted them an extension to September 29th, which is their next meeting. Um, so really that's where we are at the moment. Um, I think, um, there was several different, uh, either members of the NBC or the BOE that have attended some of those um, commission meetings. So they can certainly speak to, to what they heard, but, um, I guess generally it doesn't, it doesn't sound all that positive, um, that we're going to get an approval. So I wanted to give that update. I, um, to the commission tonight to see what kind of direction um, we wanted to head. But um, I think there's there's people in the town um, that are aware of basically the status because we uh, notified Alice Dew of the extension to the next meeting, so. So um, Jeff, um, you, your team, um, it probably is a better question for Matt from Malone and McGroom. Um, look, I know I watched and I know Josh watched the August 24th meeting in detail to listen to the comments to see how we responded back. And I don't see uh, reading through wetland regulations that they have any cause for denial of the application that's established within the state, within the statutes as they're written. Um, and I, I heard some comments that were a little troublesome and I really do appreciate uh, the professionalism of your team in responding to the three consultants that they hired that we paid for. Uh, I know that we had a lot of back and forth with them. I know your team satisfied all their concerns. I know that when they were asked by the Inland's Wetland Commission, do they have any further questions or comments on the application? None of the three of them spoke up or meaning they had no additional comments that you seem to have satisfied them all. Um, what's most troubling to me is that we've gone through great lengths, both pre-bond and post-bond, to locate this on a site, to locate this um, on the existing site so that we have the least impact to the students. And Colette, you remember the selling points on the bond that we didn't have to buy a, a new parcel. We didn't have to develop a new parcel. They were both uh, economic reasons for it, as well as reasons that um, letting the students stay where they are until the new school is built. But with the existing siting of the building, there's a large portion, which is wetland number six, that we're making, enhancing, and making it a wetlands again. It's currently mowed lawn. And I don't see how they're looking at this application with current mowed lawn that we're restoring to wetlands, natural wetlands, and they're saying that we're not doing enough on the site. So I'm, I'm really troubled by this, by this entire process. If I can um, speak up, having attended all of the public hearings, I wanna commend the entire team. You all did a fabulous job um, and provided all of the information and input and professionalism needed. And uh, Paul, I will agree with you. I, I don't, uh, even all of their requested consultants have agreed that everything is in order. So I'm, um, 
I am encouraging Deanlands Wetlands to consider this because I'm, I'm not sure what else they're looking for at this point. Yeah, I don't know. And just to um, actually more of a question for Matt, because we heard Darren mention something during the public forum or during the meeting that with, with the questions of restoring wetlands on other parcels, uh, Darren mentioned it's actually lack of a better term against state law to do so, or we don't have the authority, I mean, on a municipal level, or maybe even the state doesn't, it would be more of a army corps type of project. Um, is that correct? So like technically or legally, we cannot even entertain that. Um, well, in, in the context, in the, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Matt Sanford. I'm sure many of you saw me on the, the challenging uh, public hearings that we dealt with. And I will say this has been the most challenging um, school project that I've been involved with as relates to a wetlands commission. So um, you are allowed to do offsite mitigation as a, as a project, as long as the applicant, this being the town, um, owns that property, um, is going to have the funding and the money uh, to do the actual mitigation, and then um, the long-term maintenance of that mitigation. So it can be done, um, and um, it, it is an avenue. We could not take uh, mitigation and go to a private property um, or a private entity and, and do creation or mitigation on that type of, of, of parcel of land. But you could certainly look at town-owned um, spaces to conduct either restoration, creation type mitigation. Yeah, but, I, but I, anything off-site would not, we wouldn't receive state reimbursement for. Right, right. that was gonna be my follow-up to Jeff, yeah. just yeah. to confirm that. And, and even, uh, I guess the question would be how Barbara and the state would look at that is, um, it, would it, they not be so happy in a way that money is being spent that way from the project at all? I guess we don't know that, but I could imagine that would be the case. Um, yeah, early, very early on, there was some discussions about Erickson Farm, and I, I think they were always of the mindset that focus on the school site. Um, so I think they probably have the same mindset. I, I just want to, I don't want to, um, I'm going to recall that. There was discussions, I believe, during the, the public hearing about, you know, potential offsite mitigation on the Erickson farm. And I think, I believe, and we'll have to go back, and certainly it's all reported, <coughs> that the, the experts that um, the commission appointed um, when this was raised thought that it wouldn't really serve a great purpose, um, putting it on the Erickson farm, in fact. And maybe, Matt, you can jump in that, that it... Um, yeah. There's a suggestion there, and, and it's because of the system that's there now or the existing conditions, it wouldn't really be a benefit. So Yeah, so so one of the, yeah, obviously one of the topics that, that arose um, by the vice chairman was obviously the Erickson parcel. Um, one of the things that Jim Cowan, their botanist slash wetland scientist, um, alluded to when that was brought up um, was his concern regarding uh, impacts of the eastern box turtle which was again, one of the concerns that the commission had and that we addressed. And they were concerned that we'd actually be removing um, some of the Eastern box turtle habitat that's on the Erickson piece by, by actually removing the trees, um, removing the existing old field or meadow that's there and converting it into a wetland. So there was some hesitation by the, by the uh, third party technical review about doing some mitigation out there. And so, um, you know, that was their opinion. And, and quite frankly, um, the mitigation that they're looking for 8,000 square feet um, is, is, is not a, a large uh, wetland creation area. And the benefits of, of adding 8,000 square feet to the wetland on Erickson parcel is, is probably not gonna be of significant value um, given that it's already existing size. Um, but, you know, that's, you know, that they, they've got it in their head as a commission that they need creation and that's where they would like it to be done. So if I'm not mistaken in listening to what you're saying, they would want us to remove forested areas in order to create wetlands. Yeah, so we would likely, so one of the tasks that we would have to do is, is evaluate the Erickson parcel to see where we actually could add or create a wetland on that site. Um, and so what we need to do uh, from that perspective is we need to evaluate the existing 
um, conditions such as the soils, the topography, the hydrology. Um, likely based on, based on my familiarity with the site, we would actually have to probably remove some of the forested edge that occurs along that wetland that's out there today in Erickson parcel to actually tie in to the wetland that's there today. So we'd have to remove trees in order to put a wetland in. Um, I think it'd be a little more difficult to try to create a wetland in the middle of the field. Right. Um, could it be done? We would have to do some investigations to see if, if that was a potential, but yes, in all likelihood, we would actually have to impact um, the um, regulated review area, the, the buffer of the wetland to actually create it. And that, that makes little sense to me. Um, and then just a lot of square footage numbers are be, were being thrown around just to confirm, we're actually creating, mitigating, restoring about, or over 22,000 square feet on our parcel, is that correct? Yeah, so we've so we proposed um, a, um, a host of different mitigation strategies for the project. Uh, one of them was daylighting of an existing box culvert, um, which which in and of itself uh, creates a thousand square feet of of new water course that right now is underground in a, in a box. Um, in addition to that, because we really lack the ability to do any type of creation on the existing school site. Uh, because of topography and because of the existing conditions that are out there, uh, we proposed doing enhancement to wetlands that are of low value and that are impacted currently by the ongoing maintenance activities of the school. I, I know somebody earlier brought up that in wetland six, which is a, a mowed lawn area, which is wetland because of the soils and the hydrology that is there, um, we were looking to enhance that system. Um, I think that was roughly uh, in and around uh, 12,000 square feet. And then the, the sloped wetland out to the west by the ball fields, which again is mowed at least twice a year. We were looking to have a no mow zone there and enhance that as well. So in all the package that Josh has just talked about was roughly around 22,000 square feet. And we were impacting um, a little over 4,000 square feet of, of wetland. Um, so yeah, we, we had a plan that was comprehensive um, that had different levels of mitigation. And as I described during the public hearing that mitigation can take on several forms. Uh, it could take on preservation, meaning the pre preservation of wetlands and, and properties. It could take on creation where we physically create wetlands. And it could also take on enhancement and restoration. And we were doing the latter two, a uh, piece of creation and a piece of restoration and enhancement. So we, we felt that we provided enough mitigation to compensate for the loss of low quality wetlands uh, that were on the site. And I think their consultants agreed um, as well. They did. They did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and based upon the ratios, um, you know, I honestly, I don't know what more you can really do. So we commend you guys for going through all that and finding these solutions and really going above and beyond what the uh, standard practices are for that matter. Um, I, I don't see how this is, I mean, this is only a bonus for the town. So great job, uh, way to work through everything. And, uh, that's yeah from our end we can't ask for more yeah all right uh we've probably spent too much time on inland wetlands but i thought it was important that everybody if you hadn't watched the meetings kind of get a sense of what's going on and why um you know the town is denying the town the ability to sort of place this building where it should be okay so eddie i'll turn it back over to you and jeff great thank you jeff matt thank you for your summaries Thank you everyone for the kind words. So the zoning meeting is the next approval and that is scheduled to take place October 8th. Right now, the only open item is the Inland Wetlands. Mullen McBroom has submitted revised drawings about two weeks ago and um, met with them at their, their last meeting and confirmed that we're all set there and they're just basically waiting to hear what Wetlands has to say. The third party code reviewer will be an action item later on this evening. Uh, so Arcadis will be presenting that. From the state approvals standpoint, uh, both the flood management certificate and stormwater general permit, Malone and McBroom are working on drafts of both of those. We expect to see both of those by the end of the week. Uh, the town will be the applicant for the flood management certificate. We have received word from the state that that is who they want to see submit. Uh, the stormwater general permit will be submitted by ONG. So after the drafts have been reviewed internally by our team, those two will both go out. 
And the Lone Room has also been uh, working with the DPH to make sure that we have uh, proper care taken at the existing wells uh, to make sure that the activities that take place during construction won't impact them while they are still being used with the school in operation. We have confirmed that the proposed locations for the gas and water mains can, uh, can work at their current location. So uh, any questions on local or state approvals? Okay, uh, site, sorry, go ahead. No. Oh, okay, sorry. All right, site logistics plans um, have been distributed and Malone and McBroom and ONG are proceeding as if they're acceptable. Uh, Dr. Brill, I know you've been completely swamped, I'm sure with the reopening of school, but uh, eventually we'll like to catch up with you on that. Uh, the CD pricing set was sent out and ONG has uh, prepared their estimates. They sent it over at the end of last week. We spent the last few days uh, as a team going through the estimates. Uh, it is currently um, basically set and reconciled. Uh, Arcadis and ONG will present a recap of that uh, when I finish with my pieces. And uh, schedule updates, Laurel may have a couple of schedule updates, uh, but they're fairly minor at this point. And then last on additional consultants, uh, hazardous materials survey is complete. Uh, we do have the report. They also provided us a rough order of magnitude for pricing and that cost is included in the current estimate. Uh, commissioning CES has responded to the comments uh, that we received from the commissioning agent. And later on, again, we expect to take action on whether we're going to seek well certification for the building. Okay. Um, do we want to uh, have that discussion on well now? Uh, I know last meeting we had a, uh, because of the, the blackouts and everything, people didn't all receive emails. So we had postponed the discussion on the well um, building standards till this time. So any, everybody on the committee wanna discuss that now or do we wanna wait till later on in the meeting under new business? Well, it's up there, so might as well just do it. Um, it I think this has been a, uh, an important part of the project. Um, it, there is a financial commitment to it over the years. I don't know if the pro, I, we have to uh, use our funds for the students first and foremost. I think this does affect the students first and foremost. Um, with the rest of the commissioning years to come, I think it would be a question of whether the town and or uh, schools want to take on that extra payment in a way. Um, last thing we want to do is see more of our budget slashed and if we're trying to keep this commissioned, money's being diverted to it rather than going to where they might need to go. So I don't know if, if the project as part of the project and the kickoff of the project, I, I could support it initially. And with I know that I believe there are different um, levels and standards in terms of like a three year plan, a five year plan, a 10 year plan. If the Board of Ed and uh, the town wanted to review those plans, I, I think that the project could and should support, say, the first year of the initial commissioning type of thing. Gosh, that was I agree with you completely, um, that we support the first year, but this is definitely discussion that the Board of Ed and the town need to discuss because that's going to be a financial commitment for them going forward. Or we could just saddle the board of ed with future costs that we have nothing to do with. <laughs> now, and that, and that was largely um, my consideration too, Colette, was that we couldn't do just that. We couldn't saddle the board of ed with future costs, knowing how budgets uh, are developed and how budget season goes. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I would venture to say is probably the first thing that would get cut. Oh, I appreciate that that comment was made significantly huh? with tongue in cheek. Yeah. Uh, but you're absolutely right. This is a discussion that the Board of Education needs to have and share their vision with us. I mean, granted, we are fortunate to have three former Board of Education 
members sitting on this commission, but we cannot make decisions for them. Uh, we can try to anticipate what's what's of value to them, but that's for the Board of Ed to decide. And I think we need to have that discussion with them. Yeah, and I, I think we do too. And in going, you know, in going through, uh, you know, depending on what our financials on this project look like, whether we commit to a single cycle or a three-year subscription for the school would be something that I would advocate for to get them started um, and to give them a couple of years to get it into their budget. Um, I, I don't know that we could absorb a five-year subscription. Well, additionally, what value does this add for the educational system? Well, that would be, um, you know, Jeff, you want to opine on that? Jeff? Right. Sorry, I was trying to I was trying to find my mouse to <laughs> to get back to the unmute. <laughs> no, um, no. <laughs> uh, well, as far as the educational value, I, we we um, had put together the you know brochure that highlights all the various different um, opportunities that can can be um, worked into the curriculum. So, I mean, I guess the vision, or I know the vision of the school was really to to be one with the site, right? We talked about this for months and, and I think there's many, many opportunities, educational opportunities to, to work well building and all the, all the good things that we've worked into the building as far as the design, the construction, the type of materials, the type of systems into some kind of curriculum to weave it into either STEM or to, to, to weave it into art even um, because there's opportunities for, for um, student artwork obviously in the building. So. I think it's it's a wonderful system to really um, teach not only students but adults, you know, parents about the the what how buildings can teach you <clears throat> about the environment, about your well-being, um, about your you know your your um, I guess existence as far as the the capacity to understand kind of where you are, how how you fit into the ecosystem. So that I, I think. I know that's kind of a big answer, but I, I do believe strongly in it. I know, um, you know, working over the last couple of years here with Dr. Burrill and some of his staff that um, they really have some forward thinkers on there. And I, I do think it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to, to leverage an investment like you're proposing for this new school. So ho hopefully that's enough to, um, give you as far as the detail, but what we should share is the, um, the brochure that we put together. It actually was for the energy committee um, um, to explain all the benefits as well. So, so we, we can provide that. So Jeff, if I'm looking at spreadsheet that you put together for this, um, basically it's the 15 year cost between single cycle. On a single cycle, the 15 year cost is $95,000. Yeah, uh, the three-year subscription, the fifteen-year cost is one hundred and thirty-seven thousand. So we're talking about a commitment somewhere just south of ten thousand dollars a year for the district, correct? Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. you, you are. I I, th I think what we could do before there's a final commitment is go back to this organization um, to speak to them about if the options, if any of the options have changed in light of the various different ongoings over the last year. Um, I don't think they've updated that schedule um, recently. So I think if, if it's a strong interest and people in, in the town collectively supports it, then we can, we can certainly circle back with them. But yeah, it's, it's a definitely a commitment. Yeah. All right. So would there be any um, detriment to the process if we tabled this for a month to our October meeting so we can get some additional information? Not from our standpoint. I mean, yeah. we're still designing the project as if we were going ahead with it. So, right, and we, I think we committed Colette at the beginning of this to embrace the well building standards as part of this project. Um, it's just a matter of the ongoing uh, aspect of this. So, if there's additional information, Jeff, your brochure, absolutely, you can share with the committee. I think yep. that would be helpful. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And, and as Antonia had presented, I think a few meetings ago, I, there is no, you can do it at the very end of the project as well. There's no real penalty. So okay. I think, I think what's best is that everybody educates themselves on it to make sure that we feel, you all feel comfortable in the investment. So we can certainly put that together. Yep. Well, right. well, my concern is, is that I don't want to just keep kicking this can down the road. Understood. I think we need feedback from the board of education to say, yeah, this is a direction that we definitely support and we want to move forward with, or, you know, so long as the building is, is built and designed with, you know, the well planning in it already, what value does the certification have after the fact? Well, I think that's, Rob, that's why this sort of month of discovery and, um, getting inf additional information from TECTA that we can share with the Board of Ed and the MBC will help us, at least in October, have a, a more educated discussion and yeah, hopefully and I, maybe I, a decision going forward. Yeah, I'd very much like to pursue that and have that happen rather than just talk about it. I'd like to see it really, you know, transpire. Yeah, you and I both. I think if we have that information, then it would be more valuable for the Board of Ed to bring it to the discussion before the board there as well. Yep. Commitments well, can be made. Can I ask a quick question? Sorry. Sure. Um, what uh, do you want the do you want to gather that information and do some of that background work and then maybe invite us back next month or have what kind of communication would you like with the Board of Ed to kind of I think I would I would love to see the design team make a separate and distinct presentation to the Board of Education and then have the Board of Education come back to the MBC and say, th these are the portions of it that we want to embrace and continue forward with. Yeah, okay. because ultimately you're going to be paying the bill. OK, thank you, Paul. That's so, that's exactly what I was after. OK, so we'll, we'll prepare a package and, and circulate it to the to the group, make sure that BOE has it through a. Paul and Dr. Burrell, and then we'll set a time for us to, to give you the presentation on all the benefits. Great, thanks, Jeff. Sure. Rosa, thank you. Jeff and Eddie, if I if, if I may, Paul, uh, Jeff and Eddie, just so you know, the, 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 next, the, it's like the next Board of Ed meeting would be uh, October 7th, if there was an opportunity for any kind of a presentation, just to put a date. In your, in your tech club. Thanks, Sean. I'm sorry, Dr. Bill, what, what uh, meeting is October 7th? DOE. If ultimately, if, if, if it's a presentation it. for DOE, there, there is a board meeting tomorrow night, but I, I think that's pretty short notice and we already have an agenda, but uh, the next okay. one is October 7th. Great, thank you. All right, Eddie, let's return back to your agenda. You have anything else after um, well, well building standards? No, I think that is the end of it. I understand there was a desire to perhaps see the uh, rendering from the last time. Yeah, please, if you can share with us, uh, for those of the people who didn't see that, the last NBC meeting, we can take another look at the direction that the front elevation is going. Um, uh, Jeff, was this the one that was performed by the outside consultant? Okay, we only get a tree. There we go. Uh, this is actually our office rather than the outside consultant. All right, so we're still working with the outside consultant and developing the... We, we have that one. I thought we circulated yeah. it, but this was what we exact... This is the exact presentation we gave, uh, I believe, at the last NBC. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, this is this was part of the presentation. So there was a whole setup of slides to this point, but obviously um, the modifications for the, those that are new to this view, um, off to your right is the, the larger cafeteria, right in towards the center of your screen, if you will, is the, the main entry, and then more towards the left is the uh, pre-KK entry. And, uh, you know, the theme, the concept um, all along was kind of this idea of this treehouse, you know, you got to think like a kid, be like a kid, 
and we're trying to create a playful entry. Um, we softened it quite a bit with um, the wood timbers. We have these um, playful columns that kind of what we wanted to simulate was if you know kids were building a tree house out in their backyard as you enter and really kind of engage, get, get, get them excited. Um, you know, you can start to see the land, the natural landscape that we were really um, blending, you know, anchoring the building into the site is, is, was the other key feature I thought is really respecting the site. And that's where that whole um, landscaping plan came from was to analyze and for those that have been with, with us from day one was to analyze the history of the site and try to bring it back to life. And this is, you know, represent artistic representation of what not only the building, but the site looks like. Um, so very natural materials, stone, wood. Um, you have some of the, the metal up on the further um, on the facade further back, but I think the scale is, is much more articulated. I think it's a nice pedestrian, you know, uh, friendly approach as far as a one story. Um, and as with the interior views that we presented a, a few months, a few weeks ago or months ago now, I guess, um, the building, you know, we worked very hard to maintain views through the building to, to the uh, la uh, landscape and natural setting, but also really bring in a lot of natural daylight, which I think is going to make a, a significant impact on the students. So, And I know there is some question, Michael Murphy had reached out to me um, earlier this week or late last week, I don't know, one of the two, um, regarding some of the mosaics that were at Huckleberry. And the area to the right of the cafeteria entrance, which is on the far right of the slide, there's a blank wall that happens there that we were going to take those mosaics from the front of Huckleberry and relocate them here and try to incorporate some of the plaques and, um, and everything from prior building commissions and prior boards of education either onto stones on the site or, you know, uh, into different areas around the site. So we do, we, we are trying to, you know, especially the mosaics, which were done by the students, bring that into this and make it a part of the school in the front facade. Good point. Good. So we're, we're pretty excited about where, where we're headed with this. I, I think it's, it, Thanks for the comments uh, a few uh, meetings ago, uh, pushing us. I, I think it's greatly improved. I think it's really, it's really exciting um, to see it come along. So we're, we're pretty happy with it. And that's a really nice wetland you have out front. Hey, I knew somebody was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I guess not everybody's buying my story, right? So. right. Any, I'll, you know, look, I'll entertain any comments at this point from, Dr. Burrell, Board of Education um, on the front. If not, we want to share this slide with you guys. Um, they can kick it over to you as well. Thank you. I think it's beautiful. I think you did a really great job, you know, incorporating our feedback and it looks great. Thank you. I'd love to walk up and go to school there myself. Mm -hmm. Back to elementary school. It's, it's really magnificent. Thank you. Well, John, on the left-hand side of the slide, there's a big guy with a backpack. That could be you. That could be me. <laughs> I have kids college, high school and college age now. I'm done. I'm not walking anybody in. Hey, uh, I, I would suggest that uh, we get this, uh, this slide and show it at the Board of Ed meeting tomorrow night during the update. Right. I just, we have an opportunity because our, our, we're televised and watched by a lot of parents. This would this they don't all come to the MBC meetings, so it's a good opportunity to do some sharing. Are you saying you have better attendance, Bob, than we do? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I really we encourage you guys to share it. We we really think um, you know this is going to be a school that the entire town is going to be really proud of, yeah. and can really embrace as their own. Uh, Eddie or Jeff, whoever you know has that slide, just just send it over to me when you can. Uh, yeah. We will definitely have it as part of our update for tomorrow. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'll I'll send that over to you. I'll send the um, this is again this is as Jeff said this is the version we presented uh, last month. There is a slightly updated version that was done by a professional renderer, so I'll I'll send you that version. Perfect. All right, and can we take off revised entry design off the heading and just uh, add? Yeah, I'm just going to send an image. Uh, yeah, so, or yeah. or you can. No, but I, I mean, really, title it. Um, 
you know, okay. perspective yeah. view of news elementary yeah. school, Brookfield, Connecticut. Do. Eddie, do you have the updated version to share with us tonight? Yeah, uh, if you bear with me a second, I'm gonna stop my share so you don't see me digging through files. But no pressure, no pressure at all. Waiting for somebody to start singing the Jeopardy theme. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think Brad's really excited to see it. I can tell by his face. <laughs> yeah. Now you can you can on the fly you you can, uh, deny uh, Eddie access to the server, so he can't get it in front of everyone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, just trying to open a seventy file over the network. So bear with me a moment. If you want to continue? I can uh, just. Keep Working on this, and I'll show it when I get it up. Yeah. All right. If I may, this is Jack. I'll I'll, I'll move into our uh, our share for tonight. Well, Eddie's looking for that. Sure. Go right ahead, Jack. How are you? Good. Um, earlier this month, you were all. Uh, provided a package of the information from the third party code reviewers who responded to our, our inquiry. Uh, we got a total of three responses, uh, all of which have done uh, educational facility code reviews in the, in the past, uh, all, of, all of which are in striking distance price-wise. Um, <clears throat> I've worked with two of the three. The third, uh, Mr. Stedward, is somebody that uh, Tecton, Tecton has worked with, <clears throat> excuse me, in the past. So we have confidence that all three of these uh, individuals can, can provide the information in the time that we have apportioned to them. As you see for schedule, you know, 10 to 20 days to do the, re to do the reviews. Uh, and then of course, after we sit with the state, there's the likelihood that uh, uh, well, after the review, we'll make revisions to the documents and then it gets re-reviewed by them prior to us going to the state for our final plan review and our release to go to bid. Uh, at this point, uh, I'd be happy to ask, answer any questions that you may have, uh, if, unless you wanna just go strictly on, um, on fee, we, we can t discuss any of the other, other participants as well. Jack, I think you mentioned, um to us before or to myself, uh, Jay Verstig, he was the individual that um, previously had worked for the town with the high school. Is, was that correct as well? That's correct. And I guess when I PDF'd it, maybe that note came off the document here. Uh, but yes, the asterisk by uh, educational facility experience for Joe Versteeg was that he, he actually did the review for the high school many years ago. Uh, as, as a third party instant. Um, and I've just used him on three recent projects, four recent projects within the last 18 months. Um, and all of those reviews went relatively, uh, relatively smoothly. Um, what's the asterisk after educational facility experience? Yes, under Jay Versti. Uh, hey, you, you gotta pay attention. He just answered that. <laughs> no, I don't, if, would he answer the asterisk question? I yeah. did. It's like oh, school all over again. <laughs> My mistake. I, I, I PDF this off of an Excel spreadsheet, and I guess I didn't capture the print area to get the note that went with the asterisk, which gotcha. was to say that you know, Joe did the high school. Yep. Oh, no, no. I, I, I heard all that part. I just didn't hear the asterisk. There you go. Okay. Are you looking for a motion, Paul? Uh, yeah. I mean, that would be helpful at this point. Um, it's something that we're going to need sooner rather than later. And the sooner we can have this on, the um, better we can coordinate our schedule with them. I'm going to move that the Municipal Building Committee accept uh, Jay Versteeg as the code review consultant for the sum of $25,500. I'll second. All right, motion on the table. Is there any discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, so moved. Okay. Uh, Jack, if I can interrupt you for a second, the rendering is up if you guys would like to very see. Very good. It's all yours. Thank you. I was hoping for more than that, Eddie. Oh, that's better. There you go. <laughs> There's a little bit of a lag. So, as Paul mentioned, yeah, we're still working with them. The, uh, the landscaping materials are quite what we would want to see just yet. Uh, but it certainly is uh, a little more polished, a little more uh, photorealistic of the materials. Right. And we have to work on that stone pattern. Yes, that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the stone in the in the Bob Ross like landscaping that we were working on. We just need a happy little squirrel. Happy little bushes. But, <laughs> but it's uh, getting there. Maybe a little boat in the water there would be nice too. <laughs> Kids can I play. Thought, I thought you were going to say we should have kids slot swimming around in there. No, no, no. I was thinking the kids could play poo sticks on the bridge. This would be great. This would be great to use tomorrow night. Thank you. Great. Absolutely. I'll send that over. Eddie, if, I, if I'm looking at the right entryway where the guy in the blue striped shirt is, am yes. I looking correctly that it kind of looks like from this doorway you can see through to the back of the building? That is correct. Okay, good. So that, that might be a nice thing to point out tomorrow night when we show it that, you know, how much light it's going to let in and the views all the way to the back. That's kind of neat. Yes. So Debbie, you're absolutely right. What you're looking at is the cafeteria there. And something we had discussed early on um, is really that this cafeteria is a void between two groups of buildings. You have the school building, you have sort of this utility area, which is the kitchen, the servery, mm -hmm. boiler room, and then these two glass walls, both front and back, form that space of the cafeteria. So it is a, um, a place of great natural light. That's great. Very nice. All right, Jeff, you get a B plus great. for tonight. Thank you, Jack. Back to you. I appreciate you letting me interrupt. All right. What I not to steal ONG's thunder, but uh, uh, <clears throat> can you see my screen? Not yet. Not yeah. yet. All right. There we go. Uh, as as Eddie mentioned, that we have uh, we have reviewed the. 50% construction document estimate in significant detail. Uh, there were a lot, of, uh, a lot of suggestions on how we might be able to refine the design uh, as, we, as we move towards the finish line. Some, you know, some, some good probing questions on just what was specified and do we really intend to do it like this or could we do it like that? So a lot of, um, a lot of exploration to see how we can fine tune the, the final details of the project to bring things in um, at the best price point. Uh, as you'll see, a couple of things that are significant changes since the design development estimate. Uh, we've got some, some changes in, in site work, uh, which can be discussed, but the real notable items We've got some significant increases from what we had originally budgeted for the abatement, which are offset by some savings in demolition. Uh, one of the things that is a wild card in region one of EPA is the way they will ask us to treat PCBs. And region one headquartered in Boston asks us to look at things and um, basically look for trouble. Um, by investigating PCBs and a lot of other building materials that aren't usually probed for PCBs. And the, the methodology that we've found has been prudent to use in buildings that are still gonna remain occupied by students until demolition day. 
uh, is to expect the worst and hope for the best. So we have budgeted for the worst case that uh, all of the potential in, uh, materials that could contain PCBs are being budgeted for removal. But prior to the uh, start of demolition, we would do what we call exclusion testing. And presumably, you know, late next school year, uh, we would sample these items, get the results back prior to the demolition process starting. And if we don't need to treat them and send them to the expensive landfill, uh, we will shift the scope of work for the demolition contractor and abatement contractor and, uh, and reap some savings there. And that can be handled uh, by offering a variety of bid alternates for different levels of contamination so that we have a, a menu of choices to pick from. And depending on what comes back from the lab, we know which of those versions we need to purchase. Uh, on a couple of recent projects, we've had significant savings, you know, heavy percentages, over 25%, um, maybe even over 50% uh, on the savings as to what has been budgeted here on these line items. Uh, so we look forward to the potential to have that type of savings here. To hey, Jack. Yes, sir. Sorry, I, I don't want to interrupt, but I want to kind of hang out on that subject for a moment sure, um, sure. and get some feedback from both the BOE and the NBC. Um, and, and I'll give you my personal, you know, opinion um, first. Um, you know, I, I well appreciate EPA Region 1, and I, I work in EPA Region 2, um, which has a different viewpoint. So I, I think we need to have more of a discussion with, um, our, <laughs> with EPA Region 1 about doing this prior to... Um, prior to bidding and demolition than we we're talking about. Because as we look at a million dollar var potential variance, these savings wouldn't be realized until after we've built the building. This is just prior to demolition. We're gonna go in and test, which means we have no opportunity to utilize this money right here if it's indeed... Um, credited back to the owner, we have no opportunity to use this for items such as the additional classrooms, additional ff &E if we have all the classrooms constructed. Basically what this becomes is, ah, we turn it to the owner, we didn't use it. So I, I would really like to explore some different methodologies in the next month or two that maybe we can look and do some testing and talk with EPA Region 1 um, without it causing a conundrum. Uh, I know that they are very um, aggressive with their stance on PCBs in Region 1, but there has to be some other uh, avenue that we can explore so that we can utilize these monies toward the building and toward the students rather than just having it returned at the end. We've already gone from eight classrooms per grade to 10 classrooms per grade. I think we can all agree that we probably could use this money in the building construction um, better than returning it at the end of the project. That's an excellent point and I'll see if we can get, get a conference set up. I think our first step would be for, um, for you to, you know, to meet with, our, with, the, uh, with the consultant and then you know, come up with a game plan of how to approach region one on not, as you say, returning money too late to do it to the project any good. Okay, is the MBC, the balance in the NBC comfortable with me meeting with Eagle and Environmental to kind of discuss a way forward um, to maybe do this testing sooner rather than later so we can utilize these funds toward the building? Yeah, and I'd say even uh, go so far as if there, there was um, some issues that arise, even if the owner were to do some separate testing by themselves, so at least we could better have an understanding of what scope we have um, and even if Eagle needs to test again later. Okay. Okay, very good. Um, as I said, there are another, a, a number of other adjustments that have been made, things like the um, design contingency are naturally coming down as the documents are more fully detailed. Dollars go into the trade lines and come out of contingency lines. But uh, 
the in interesting, interesting comparison is here where we get down to the bottom line variance over our construction budget of $66 million. At the end of design development, we had a 3.3, a almost $3.4 million gorilla in the room. Uh, right now with adjustments made to date, and there are a few things that Tecton is, and ONG are still researching that uh, could help sharpen the pencil a little bit more. We're down you know, from 3. Point, call it 3.4 down to about just under 2 million as our exceedance. And that includes that inflated uh, abatement and remediation number that we just spoke of. Uh, so we are definitely moving in the right direction. We have the opportunities to, uh, to explore more uh, adjustments as we uh, finalize the documents. Um, but again, in the context that the committee has spoken of it in the past, uh, this is for a building that is, you know, from a student population percentage, you know, quite a considerable percentage larger than what you were originally given to build. And to be within $2 million of that target, I'd say is, uh, you know, speaks very well to the design team uh, to, to try to maintain the level of quality that the, the community expects and yet still bring it in at a, at a, reason, a fairly reasonable price point. So this is inclusive of all of 10 classrooms per grade level, correct? That is correct. Uh, what, okay. it does not, what it does not include is the potential second elevator. We're building the elevator shaft to fit two cars, but we're not buying the second car yet unless we know we can afford it. Uh, and there are some other alternates that, are, that I can click to next. Uh, no, I, I mean, at this point, I think we need to look at the bigger picture. Um, I think the first selectman was very clear on our last MVC meeting, or is it two meetings ago when we came through with the DD estimate that we're not to reduce the quality of this building um, because of the increase in the size that let's see where it comes in on bid day and then have an, an informed conversation at that point. Yeah. Um, like you said, this includes nine hundred thousand or nine hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars of PCB abatement, uh, and what was if you go up a page, there was still design contingency there. There was still design contingency to the tune of about one and a half million dollars. Okay. Um, I, I, I recognize that you know a good portion of that may get utilized as one hundred percent condox comes out, mm -hmm. um, but. You know, and we do have escalation, owns the million dollars of escalation in there that we're not quite sure where the um, construction market's going. Right. So there, there are some wild cards. So I think you're right when you said being within $2 million at this juncture with a building that is probably close to 14, 15,000 square feet larger than what we started with. Is a, is, is a good testament to the design team and to ONG for putting together, you know, a really sharp estimate. They know the market better than we do. Um, they do this for a living. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased to see that we're within $2 million. I, I really think that speaks highly of our entire professional team that we have assembled. Now, two items that we know are desired by the town, have been spoken about in different contexts, but which are not in this construction number of 67, nine, call it $68 million, are the two items at the bottom, the fields at Navy Road and removing the portables and creating new baseball fields at Wiskineer. Well, that's a non-starter. Those items have to be within that number. So again, so it's, it's a matter of you know, where, do, where do we put them in the overall? Because right now we've, uh, you know, we've spoken of them as you know, something that's on the side. So if it's the committee. Um, those, no. are always, those are always included within the bond. So okay. that's a non starter That has to be included as items, you know, under total construction cost. Okay, very because, good. Then, then we will, then we will, you know, alter the format of this accordingly. Okay, great. Uh, the asterisks there uh, talk about the fact that these are offsite improvements and they are not eligible for reimbursement by the state, but- We're not so sure about the um, portables and the baseball field at West Canary because it is on a school site. Uh, but in context for the elementary school, you know, the, the, the grant 
uh, is for an elementary school, not for work on other properties. Un un understood. We've had some discussion regarding this. And uh, if you could rename fields at Nabby Road just for um, playing relocation playing fields, because we're not doing them on Nabby Road. Okay, we'll make note uh, of just, that as well. Ju just so when somebody picks this up, it's, um, you know, it's interpreted correctly. So re relocated athletic fields and then... Relocated athletic fields and the removed portables and these baseball fields at Wiskaneer Middle School. All right. And you know, we'd, we'd be happy to arg argue those points that you know, we're, we're taking features away. We need, we're looking to replicate them and, and uh, attempt to get reimbursement to the greatest extent possible. Yeah, and the worst they can say is no, right? And we're right where we are. Yeah, but we will move those two lines you know, further, further up above the, above the total. Right, I appreciate that. Okay, a uh, couple of items. Well, I'll, 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 leave, I'll leave the discussion of the alternates, I guess, to, uh, to, to, to Laurel. I apologize for that one. We'll oh. Click off geez, of that one. Geez, thanks, Jack. You delivered all the big good news. You know, you leave us, <laughs> you leave us the alternates. That's it. That's all we get. Well, that's, that's all you. That's all you get, David. And we're going to sit here and go. We don't want to review alternates yet because we don't know what's happening. There we well, go. Then I'm well knowing that you're just going to shut that down. I'll I'll let Laurel talk to that then. All right, perfect. <laughs> Hi, Laurel. All right, let me stop sharing here and away you go. Okay, so you want, you want, I don't have that screen up. So I, I wasn't going to talk about alternates unless you did want to go through them. All it is, is we did cost what was on the last documents. There were some finished changes just so that you knew what the approximate value was. Um, one, one item that we identified that we thought was a little high was plantings. We got about $350,000 worth of plantings in the project right now. So we're thinking there might be a way of doing some savings on that, but that's in further discussion. Don't um, tell the wetlands that. And yeah. then the elevator. So that was basically all that was missing on the, um, the uh, alternate schedule. So, Laura, so, what, what is the value of the elevator? Uh, it was 114,000. Uh, Jack, do you want me to stop sharing? I don't have that like right. Well, maybe I do. Yeah. Maybe I do. I got to find it. Yeah, Laurel, it's 113265 is what's in oh. our alternate. Yeah, hold on, let me see, how do I get rid of you? Hide self view, I don't know how to hide this. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Yes. 113, so one, one, I don't know how to hide this thing. Oh, over there. Yeah, so 113. Yep. And then we did it, we, we right now we do have the three classrooms included. So if you, we, we weren't, yep. at this moment in time, we weren't sure if we should be keeping that for now or not. Um, I think that's a discussion we're going to need to have with Board of Ed and the Board of Selectmen. Another item is adding uh, so, some type of security glazing around the building right now. In our estimate, we just have it at, at some of the entries, a couple of the entries. So again, this is, is another item that's kind of in a state of flux with what we're going to do with that so that when we go out to bid, we can get a good number for it. Okay. Uh, I see tarantula hands, tarantula fingers. <laughs> um, and then the rest of these are just some finishes that just because that was identified in case somebody wanted to know. So again, we have the higher floor finish in our estimate right now. Okay, that's good to know. Yep. Um, and then last was just another site item that we thought of, which was we have a lot of cast in place curbs, which is somewhat expensive. We have some extruded curbs. So if we were to replace them with precast, there could be some savings there. So that's just some more food for thought. And that those type of site work um, alternates, I really like because a it doesn't impact the kids. You know, we're not talking about doing it with you know replacing cast and place curbs with asphalt curbs. We're talking about doing them with precast concrete curbs. So mm -hmm. to me, that is a worthwhile exploration. And if we can identify a bunch of items like that, um, that's generally the direction that we prefer to go in. Mm -hmm. The LVT, we haven't even had a discussion yet with um, Dr. Burrill and the Board of Education as far as interior finishes. So I'm glad to hear that we included the higher finishes. Mm -hmm. They may elect to use LVT, but I think that's a discussion that we need to have internally and then come back to you guys and say, you know what, we're going to buckle down the, uh, the finish schedule and here's what we actually would like to use. 
So then it may go to LVT to VCT rather than LVT or carpet to LVT. And I like to, I would prefer when we go out to bid to actually have add alternates. Um, mm -hmm. I know these, these are, these are prices if they're deducts, but I mean, from a bidding perspective, I think it makes more sense to have it as add alternates. So the minimum quality finish that we, we can live with is, you know, should be in our base bid. And then if there's some sort of an upgrade, um, which these would like somewhat represent the upgrades, maybe do that as an ad alternate. And I just want to remind, like we're, we're starting to head down the home stretch. So these decisions yep. want to be made sooner rather than later. So I guess I'm going to, I'll start chiming in on that as far as our timing is starting to run down. So we basically have two months left, two months. So spoken like a true construction manager, push, push, push. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With a, um, but, with a, but with a date with the state for November we we'll say 19th, 18th, 18th, 18th. yes, whatever, whatever that Wednesday is. Yeah. Uh, it really is the, the October meeting of the MBC is going to be our last opportunity to uh, to tweak things and then give Tecton enough time to get it into the documents that we'll be approving in order to go to them in mid November because uh, we're supposed to be voting on the final drawings. So we can't really be voting at the November meeting to change the content of the design. No, but changing, L, you know, carpet to LVT or but changing the finish schedule shouldn't, you know, be an arduous task. Right. No, but to, you know, to, to a, give final approval to a list of alternates in November, that was, you know, that's about as, as close to the finish line we can go. And Jeff can just stay up all night. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, was there Question something else? real quick. Um, yeah. What is the code or guidelines for an elevator per student count? I don't believe that there's actually a, it's not like an office building where you've got a people mover ca calculation, uh, say to get up into uh, you know a, a skyscraper. Uh -huh. uh, as far as schools are concerned, it's meant predominantly for accessibility purposes, not for general circulation. Absolutely. The student, you know, the students would be you know utilizing the stairways unless for some reason they they couldn't. Right. I just didn't know if there were guidelines as far as even accessibility for elevators per um, person. Well, the size elevator that we have is adequate for wheelchair access. Uh, I think we might want to double check the cab size to see, you know, worst case scenario to make sure we get a gurney in there if EMS has to go up to the second floor. Um, to ver verify those dimensions mm -hmm. just, just to make sure. But uh, I believe what we have is... It should be fine there. Yeah. You know, so Colette, the reason for the second elevator, I mean, the duplicity is always to have redundant systems um, such that if one goes down, uh, a student who needs access to the upper level will always have the availability of a, of a unit. We, we all know that in the high school and especially in Huckleberry, the amount of times the elevator did go down and students are left without the, um, you know, the ability to communicate between floors. But that is the reason for the two elevators. I'm with you. I think if, you know, for $113,000, put it in. But these are the types of conversations we're going to have over the next month. Right. And, and my thought is not even, I mean, in addition to the amount of students that you're going to have that are not going to be able to go up and down the stairs, you also have staff with carts and um, other things that need to go up and down that aren't able to access via stairs. Well, hopefully they won't be going up and down with carts that we have enough storage and education well, materials per level that, you know, and that's up to John to set up the school correctly. <laughs> there, there, there's always things, but yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I like the redundancy and I would advocate for both elevators at this juncture. Right. I, I wouldn't even call it a redundancy at this point. I would almost call it a necessity just for the size of the building. Okay. All right, Laurel, back to you. Okay, so I'm going to, if, if nobody has any more questions on either the cost estimate or this alternates list, I was just gonna go on to the schedule real quick. Sure. Okay, so everybody, we all pretty much talked about a majority of these items already. Um, this is where we're at, where third-party code reviewer, same type of thing. 
just to remind you that there's going to be other services that are going to be needed. So, you know, the, it continues on. Um, there's going to be a special inspector, special inspections that's going to need to be solicited. Um, there's going to be material, construction materials testing firm. Again, this is not for a while, but just letting you know that you're going to be needing to um, be approving these other services as well. So it doesn't end here. So just to highlight that. Um, I just had it on my presentation, my schedule for this Board of Ed update presentation, which the design team, we're not at this tomorrow night, correct? I had it on my schedule. Correct. Are we supposed to be there or? We're, we're, we're not, I don't think we're, I don't know that you folks were ready. So we, we haven't had that conversation. Okay. But, yeah, I just, it was on the schedule. Yeah, we, we weren't ready. It was on. Given, given the conundrum wet, wetlands right now, that's kind of taken precedent. Okay. But just to give them a warning that we're going to be coming to them in two months for an approval. So it was kind of probably just, you know, let them know that this is, we're coming towards the end and we're going to be coming for an approval. And it's going to be critical to get those approvals for when we need them. Um, we're going to be at, about at the point where we're going to be issuing another set. We'll call it a 90% construction documents set that's going to be coming up in a few weeks. We'll be starting another estimating round. And this is the set that I will basically be doing my, you know, the bid packages off of getting prepared to go up to the state, finishing my front end. So we'll be starting to do that. Here's the local review. This is what we just talked about. We just approved tonight when we would anticipate that occurring. And again, just as a heads up, we're going to be looking for approval somewhere around the 16th, 17th of November, because we do have our PCR meeting set with OSCGNR for November 18th. So we are in their schedule. Okay. And I would, you know, I'm, I'm anticipating trying to get out to bid within about three weeks from there because I do want to get a jump on the holidays. We know that there are other projects coming out after the holidays and we already want to have see, contractors seen our documents for a couple of weeks. So they have some sort of investment um, for, for our project. So that will be less competition um, with other projects. Just keeping an eye on these local approvals. Um, I had anticipated what well, we anticipate as a team, you know, giving them till about the end of September. This is a critical path item. It affects zoning, which you guys are well aware of. So what will happen is here's another critical item that we don't want to lose track of is getting the OSTA administrative decision. So what these will end up impacting is us going up and getting sign offs, because um, what has to happen is the building official, everybody's got to basically sign off on the package that goes up for this November meeting. And that's usually when the, the, the stuff hits the fans if, if our approvals aren't in place. So, you know, these are the things that we're going to want to keep track of that we really want to have wrapped up by the time we go up for our meeting with the state. So Laura, let me, uh, I, I just wanna ask a kind of a pointed question. Without wetlands approval, this um, we're going to see in a, a schedule strung out for a period of time if we don't obtain wetlands approval, would that have an economic impact on the project? Yes, I don't know if you want me to show you again the escalation cost per month, yes. I didn't calculate it, but it's at least that. Um, and the thing is, is that it was impacting the zoning approval. And as long as the local building official is willing to sign off on the set, that it's a permittable set, at least we can go up to, P to OSC GNR and say, okay, well, at least we know it's a permittable set, you know, wait, waiting on the inland wetlands approval. I mean, there are ways to kind of get around the process, but we absolutely, they will not let us go out to bid. You know, usually, again, there's Sometimes there's ways around it where you might get a condition. This is from Nanawag. This is the other time that we ran into all kinds of trouble with inland wetlands approvals. This is in Woodbury. And, you know, they said, okay, we will let you go out to bid, but you, you know, you, you won't be able to do anything until we, we receive this. So okay. there are workarounds, but I'd rather not do that. We'd rather just try to proceed the way we're supposed to go. It just makes it easier on everybody. So agreed. Um, and Laurel, Laurel, you're figuring is, are you figuring a two week period of time after PCR for approval to bid? I think it calculates 13 or 15 days, 13. I think it's about three weeks by the okay. time we get through the 18th, you got Thanksgiving in there. So it kind of sets it off a little bit. Well, and so. I, and I think that with the, I don't know how, you know, I think that the PCR that we're just going through on another project now, I think, you know, being that it's all remote, I think three weeks is a, is an adequate. Yeah. I have like two, 13. Two 13 yeah. working days, which is mm -hmm. basically because you got Thanksgiving in there. 
Right. And, and again, I am trying to get out. You can see I'm planning on taking a while through January, but um, we do want to get out ahead. We want to get on the street. We want people looking at our project as quickly as possible. So that's just kind of overview of where we are and just kind of targeting those items that are critical that we don't want to lose sight of. All right, and I saw at the end, um, you're looking, if we keep the schedule to establish the GMP in uh, March 21st, and just so everybody realizes, you know, that's only six months from now. Mm -hmm. And six months goes quick. If you yep. remember March 17th is when everything was shut down. We're six months later here in COVID-19 world. It, it went by quick. So um, it, it will be here very quickly. All right, and that's all I had um, as far as updates for tonight. Okay, if you could, could you assemble a, a very short list of owner action items, things that we need to act upon and some rough order of magnitude dates so we know that from the owner side, we're not holding you up? Uh, yeah, um, well, you're not, uh, do you want me to blame you for Inland Wetlands approval? You can blame me for the sure. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the, it's pretty much what I have highlighted. You know, it looks okay. like you've got something done tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to get one gold star. <laughs> if hey, I can, can, I, can, I jump, can I jump in for a second okay. with, with a question? Sure. Um, we need to uh, get Steve Dunn involved with what's going on with Inland Wetlands because it's dramatically impacting our project and our cost figures. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's been apprised of everything. Uh, we've had these design consortium meetings, which was supposed to be a collaborative effort from all the approving bodies in town over the last eight to nine months. Um, so uh, he, he's well aware of, of the situation. Jack, you want to say something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um... I know, I know it's early days, but uh, I was looking ahead at construction phase one. It's, it's only, uh, what, eight, eight line items. But something that caught my eye was the last line item, heating equipment commissioning, okay, which doesn't occur until November of 2022. That's two months after the school's occupied. Uh, that, that's kind of unusual. I've, I've never seen uh, a school enter occupancy without the commissioning completed. Just, just punch list items maybe to clean up, but uh, what, what, what's the intent there, Laurel? Or the Dave? intent there is so that we buy from the contractors coming back to just finish any commissioning. Um, when we go to turn this building over, it's gonna be in the summer. So yeah. I am never sure that we can fully commission the heating side of things properly when we're trying to do everything else that we're trying to do and we're scrambling in the end. So this kind of, um, it's, if it's on the schedule, it lets the, all the contractors that are involved with the heating equipment know that if they have to come back and commission. And a lot of the language that's in our bid documents, which you'll be able to review, um, is tied to that commissioning being the full system completely um, commissioned. So, I mean, I, I, don't, I, always, I always put these in my schedules. I don't know what actually, um, when we're trying to turn over in the middle of summer, it depends on the mechanical equipment, whether or not you can actually do a full heating commissioning in the summer, because that's basically when everything's gonna be done. And, and to, to follow up with what Laurel said, we generally do see commissioning. Um, we, we, we generally do require them to come back to do off season, I'll call it like commissioning if we, we open a school in the winter, they have to come back in the summer to start up chiller or to do commission, fairly typical of what we would see. Yeah, I mean, I, I can see what, what they call functional testing being done. You, you, need, you need the conditions to do that. But there's also the pre-operational uh, commissioning, which is quite extensive and can be done, you know, basically any time. So I, I just, it just, it just jumped out at me. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, you, you gave a good reason why you put it there. Yeah, uh, Jack, it might just be my bad terminology. Maybe that's just not the proper terminology, but it's basically a comeback to make sure that everything's working okay at that first heating season. Okay. All um, right. Um, while, we're, while we're on that, I have one other comment. I'm mm -hmm. looking at substantial completion as the 10th of August. Um, and, you know, <laughs> I, I think from the school side, that's got to happen a month sooner. 
Um, we're going to have to move two other buildings into this building. We need, you know, move management help, uh, mm -hmm. which I know we've gotten for, that we're going to get from Arcadis. But I don't think that we can have substantial completion on the 10th of August and open a building for the first day of school 21 days later. Yeah, I, this is what I've allowed at this point. I just did the 27 months, which I think is what we started with. Yeah, um, again, I think we're going to need to accelerate that a little bit. Just as we're squeezing the architects, we get to squeeze the, con <laughs> the construction manager. June 30th, yeah. Laurel. June 30th. <laughs> Jack, I, I, you, you, you laugh, but I agree. I mean, <laughs> we're combining two schools into one. Teachers have to set up classrooms. There's a lot that has to happen. The, the other thing I want to put out there, and, and maybe Laurel, you can explain this. It, it, it's, it's something I, I, I thought perhaps had already been talked about at maybe the last meeting that I wasn't uh, participating in. But Jack made me think of it, and I appreciate him asking. Laurel, can you talk a little bit about the site development with demolition of uh, the, what will be called the old building and getting the new driveway built and some of the concerns with parking, driveways, et cetera, to even start in the fall? which is something I've been kind of waiting on, but thinking about um, and working with the, uh, the current Huckleberry principal, just having some conversation on what that, what that inconvenience might look like once the new school building is built and the hey, old hey, Huckleberry John. is demolished, and yet the site and the driveways are not necessarily complete. And it, mm. you, may, you may have had some evolution there, but that's mm. an important part for everybody to know about. Hey, hey John, we did have a little evolution there, and I was kind of letting you get past your first day of school. I know, um, you know, the, the first two weeks, uh, especially in the times where we're kind of um, busy with some stuff with COVID and making sure the schools are operating um, properly. I think in the next week, we would love to sit down with you and kind of go through this sure. point by point, if that would be helpful. Um, because, you know, er everything has a cost impact sure. and, I think we need to be creative in how we look at this. And um, do you have time next week for me? Paul, I always have time for you. <laughs> uh, you're, you're, you're the nicest. Thanks, John. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I think sitting down with this pen and paper in hand, going through it on a table, um, we, we'd make a lot of headway. And Laurel, I'll, obviously, you know, um, you would be part of this meeting as well. Mm -hmm. So I'll coordinate between you and John and myself and whatever, whoever uh, else from BOE and NBC wants to attend to kind of sit down and hash this out. Sounds good. Sounds and good. one more thing before I get off of the schedule, because um, we assume some dates in here for approvals. Just want to go back to that. I, I just want to make sure that these are regularly scheduled meetings right now. So would we have a, what's the 17th? Is that a Tuesday? Wednesday? Yeah, November November seventeenth is a Tuesday. So that, that's the day right before the PCR. Yeah. Um, so when's I, the regular when's the regular board of ed meeting in November? What's the date of that? That is seven, maybe. No, uh, um, it's the next day usually, right? It's the eighteenth. No, no, there's well only in November we only have one meeting. We don't have two. Oh. So I'll have to look at my, we can schedule have to look at my calendar, but um, I think it's November fourth. November fourth is the regular meeting. But we certainly and I know there's a number of board members on the on the meeting right now. We can this is critical. We would schedule I, I imagine we would schedule a special meeting. Yeah, this the, the go ahead. Somebody if if we something. could do it, if we could do a special meeting, you know, like a joint meeting, the, the yeah. start of the NBC meeting, you know, to, yep. to have a, a board of ed vote. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I was actually going to suggest. We can, well, we're definitely open to doing that. And uh, when's the, what, when's the NBC meeting in this that's, time? Frame? That's the seven, that's the 17th. That's the, the, the evening before the PCR the next day. All right. But, so, so that's. The 17th is the next, is the November NBC meeting. Just confirming that. The 16th. Tuesday. Okay. Sorry, I missed that again. What's the 16th? I don't know. I'm asking. Oh. No. Oh, seventh. No. The seventh. The 17th is the is the third. The third Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, so that's a regularly scheduled NBC meeting. So 
when right. you guys are at your board of ed, can you see if you can get a special meeting scheduled jointly to be with MBC that night? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that will be on the to-do list too. Mm -hmm. All right. So is there anything on schedule that um, impacts us other than June 30th? <laughs> Jack? <laughs> <laughs> You know all the reasons why. Oh. All right. So, Laurel, anything else with your update? No, that's it. All right. Thanks, Dan. Can we, can we go back no. to the uh, site drawing? Site, the site logistics plan. Yes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. There's something that I looked at this week, and it occurred to me, I know that it's late in the design phase, but the construction manager field office and the parking area, mm -hmm. we're taking away the ball field pretty early on. And they use that area as a soccer field. And the town is significantly impacted by field space. Is there any way we could move that office further to the, in this particular drawing, to the left so that it's not in the field area where students could, you know, potentially be using that as a field? Um, I don't want to be in my own way. So that, you know, it'll just force us to, we're going to be in our own way if we're sitting up here on the parking lot. Um, I think back here, I left as much of the field as I could for them to use. There will be a time when we're going to start filling it in. So it will not be usable. It will only be usable for a playing field for while we're building the new school building. Then after that, it's got to be seeded and or sod. And it needs to be, you need to keep off of it so that it can grow. So, so why don't we take a look at site phasing with turf establishment and everything else to see when would be the first available date that field would be able to be used anyway. And then we can adjust the CM field office if need be. Thank you, because again, my concern is, is the first year, you know, as we're beginning construction, mm -hmm. not, you know, two years down the road, I'm just talking about this upcoming year. Mm -hmm. We're already losing one field. Let's not lose two. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's such a necessary. tight site. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, look at it. Laurel, the, the, the bottom part of that page were prohibited, right? Because we're into the boundaries. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to go on this side because the neighbor's right there. Yeah. I just don't think that that's a doable spot. All right, we'll, we'll, well we can explore it. Yeah. And, yeah. And, it, and I think, I think we could bring in, uh, you know, Mary Knox from Park and Rec again in Chris Rebuse, uh, just for part of that conversation as well, just to mm -hmm. double check usage and so forth. I'm, I'm trying to be considerate of what their needs are. I'm just yeah. anticipating them. Asking, no, no, it's if, great. Com it's great. Asking comments, this and let's get ahead of it. Yeah. If I could jump in there, uh, you know, I just think it's into scale, so I can't really judge, but it does look really tight on, on parking. I mean, particularly uh, next to that, uh, your construction office, you're going to have weekly construction meetings. You might have, I don't know, 15 or 20 extra people come to those meetings. Uh, my experience is usually that turns into a, a sea of mud and then it freezes in the wintertime and uh, people are parking all over the place. I, 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 are you comfortable that it's going to be enough room for you to uh, function properly? So, Jack, on this is considered phase two, which is reflecting the Titus, which happens to be just the summer. So right. for the majority of the time that we're building the building, we'll have this, but we'll also have, you know, for parking okay. for our guys. Right, we will right. have, you know, the site, we'll have access to the site. This is just reflecting the summer months when I'm trying to get this parking lot built. And then the next phase, when they come back to school, we'll actually have this whole area up here where we're demolishing the building. So not, the, it's a very tight site, but there is a place for us to do some more parking over in here. Yeah. In the upper left-hand corner, Laurel has the dates for the phases and you can see phase two is just summer 2022. Yeah, I have it over okay. here. So yeah. it's 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 kind of it's, it's misleading, but this is literally just the summer when none of the owners are there and just we are here. Right. Um, and then and then prior to coming back to school, um, we would have this area. Or once they come into the new school, we would have this somewhat of an area. So yes, I recognize this would just be like literally, you know, talking to people that are coming into the site, really, and our okay. and our and our staff. Yeah, there's well, going to be very little construction activity at that point, other than the right. site work. Right. And where, where would the uh, owners uh, uh, project manager 
set up site. Is he going to have his own trailer or is he going to have an office in your trailer? Uh, we I, have, think, I think I asked him to buy a hatchback. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't talked about that. Um, I, if they need their own trailer on site and where that would go. Okay. I'd like to avoid the cost of a separate trailer if we can, if we can find a, you know, some some space in the existing building that we might be able to use just as a, you know, a, a sit down place because he will be on site a good period of time out and about. But. Well, again, this, this is something for Arcadis ONG sort of hash out, come to us with a site logistics plan, not only for the physical site, but for operations. And then, you know, we can move to approve it, modify it, or make comments at that point. I don't think it's, um, you know, 100% vetted out and, I know it's going to depend on how many primes we're going to, how many primes are going to break this package into. Yeah. And then just getting back to the existing building, I don't have the, um, I don't have the, the existing building drawings that Eagle prepared readily available, but there's a couple of rooms behind, this is more for Dr. Burrill, behind the gymnasium where there was an addition that was put on. I don't know if it's obvious when you're in the school where that addition line is. But that's basically where we're going to do this partial demolition. So, little, little, little bit of detail there. But that's where, if you can get out of the, that area a little sooner, maybe we can get started a little sooner. So that's just something to keep in for food for thought. We'll be out of that area on June twenty fourth <laughs> of this year, of next year. Yeah, right. <laughs> good, good play. Um, okay. All right. Again, I think this is all you know something that we're going to have to sit down and kind of move through with John, get the school comfortable with where we're headed with this, come back to the NBC with it, have some more comments and share. But I think that our first stop is really, I need, um, you know, Dr. Burrell and his team to sit down with us and ONG and, and kind of, you know, see what we can have as far as the site. And then we can sort of split it up between contractors and parking and such, Jack. Mm -hmm. We yeah. may have to give everybody temporary offices in the new school while it's being built. Okay. Or there's a nice parcel up at the rear that we own that's in Danbury. It's relatively flat at the top. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And with that, that's all I have. Great. Thank you, Laurel. Okay. So moving on, I think we're done with updates. Um, Catherine, do we have any communications to share? Uh, no, except I just saw Eddie sent something yesterday, so I just sent it to the NBC. I'm sorry I missed it, but Have I don't think no communications from outside bodies. No, okay. Invoices, Jack, you're up again. Invoices, yes, let me share my screen. All right, uh, there was an, a revised packet distributed today. Uh, we have a, uh, a list of invoices here, seven items in total. We also have some purchase order requests that will need to be blessed. Uh, <clears throat> First invoice is for Trinkus, one of the engineers for wetlands for 3,500. Uh, the July ONG Precon services invoice for 15384 Another invoice from Trinkus for $228750. Davison Environmental is the is another one of Wetlands consultants for $8125. Uh, architectural services to Tecton. I believe this brings us up to um, 40% CDs, even though we know we've gotten 50% out of them. Uh, so we're in their pocket a little, but that number is 276 97320. Uh, th this item, deep test for FSM services. Uh, this was a situation where, through the discussions with wetlands, we needed to do some additional on site testing. Uh, Malone and McBroom uh, arranged to have staff out there to do, I think there were two or three uh, test pits up to eight feet deep. Uh, we looked at means in which to get these pits dug, tests taken, and the holes filled in in the same day. 
Uh, the most affordable way of doing that was to use a contractor that the town of Brookfield usually uses, which was FSM. So they were, you know, basically responded overnight to uh, to take care of this for us. Uh, we'll now need to get a purchase order in order for them to get paid. And then the August uh, invoice from Arcade is for $20,000. So the total value of the invoices presented tonight, $328,270.32. And we'd like a motion to approve. All right. So uh, make, make just, a motion first. <laughs> no, I, I want to have a conversation first. We can't until we make the motion. Oh, we can, have we, a, we can have a discussion, though, because I have a question. Discussion after a motion. No, I have yeah. a question about invoicing. Robert's rules, Josh. There has to be a motion on the floor in order to have discussion. Well, if it's a technical, you don't do that. If if it's a technical question, it's a you know, technical we, question. We probably do it out of order. Well, fine. Then somebody make a motion. Do I hear a motion for? Approval of invoices. We're not voting on it. It's just a, a motion so we can have a discussion on it. All right. Nobody's getting paid this month then. <laughs> I'm going to make a motion to approve invoice 43217 to Tecton Architects in the amount of 200 $76,973.20. All right, so Rob's got a point. Do I get a second on Tecton Architects invoice? Second. All those in favor of any discussion wait, 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 on Tecton? Wait, 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 discussion, discussion. Any discussion on Tecton Architects invoice? All right, hearing none. All those in favor of approving Tecton Architects invoice? 276 97320. Aye. 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 All those opposed? Tecton Architects invoice approved. So let's go through it one by one. Then. All right. I'll make a motion to approve ONG Industries 153862. Second. All those in favor? Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. All right, I'll make a motion to approve uh, for us FSM services for two grand. I get a second. Any discussion? As Paul indicated at our last meeting, it's unfortunate that our own park and rec, or I don't know. DPWN park and rec. Yeah, well, it's, it's unfortunate that we couldn't do it ourselves, but because of timing, we understand and we'll live with the $2,000 price tag for it. Yep. All right. Any discussion? Any more discussion? All those in favor of approving FSM services invoice? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Hey, Next. Jack, you want to do the one for Arcadis? I'd appreciate that. No, I meant Jack Ludwig. Oh, the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want him to feel left out. All right. Um, I make a motion that we approve the uh, invoice from Arcadis. And I'm going to need a magnifying glass to read this. Uh, for the amount, uh, for the amount of uh, twenty thousand dollars, to bring the uh, for the amount of twenty thousand dollars. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. All right, that leaves us with Trinkhouse, Trinkhouse, and Davidson Environmental. I know Josh wants to have discussion on it, so I'm going to make the motion and to open up the floor for discussion. Uh, I'm going to make a motion to approve the Trinkhouse Engineering LLC uh, engineering review for the amount of $3,500. I get a second. I need a second to open up discussion. It doesn't get a second, it just dies there. 
Well, and then we don't have any discussion. Right. So somebody make it a second so we can have a discussion on the invoice. I know where Josh is going. Thank you. I'll second it. Discussion. Now you can say what you want to say. Oh, I've got, no. I appreciate Trinkhouse's work. I appreciate Davidson's work. I did think they did a phenomenal job. I don't think, I think they did their job and I think they're deserving of being paid. With that said, I question if we had hired or if we were, if we use these services because Inland Wetlands wish to hire these third-party consultants and Inland Wetlands is ignoring their advice as well as even disputing their findings, I question why Inland Wetlands hired, had us hire them to begin with or hired them to begin with. We weren't even given the choice of whom to use. So if we're not gonna use their services, why are we gonna foot the bill? That is my question. An excellent point. Yes, they were hired to review Malona McBroom's documentation to comment on it and that we were to make changes that were in line with their recommendations. So to, to be clear and fair, I have zero issue with the work they've done. I think they did a phenomenal job. I think they did their work in full and probably above and beyond due to inland wetlands. However, if the purpose of this exercise was for a third party review and forced by inland wetlands, which I understand why, but inland wetlands is not gonna use that service, then they can pay for the wasted money. That would be my thought. My concern is, is that we are incurring significant additional costs that we did not budget for, we did not plan for, and we're not discussing or having any input to. We're just being basically forced to pay a bill without any consultation whatsoever. I find this highly irregular. And I'm very concerned that other agencies can be spending money out of a budget without input from those that are responsible for the budget. Right, and I know Rob, you had that concern earlier. Um, I know you had some exchange with the first selectman and land use department on that to see what was usual and customary. Um, you know, speaking from my professional experience, it's not unusual, it's unfortunate because you expect the towns when they do a review to have those personnel on staff, but a lot of the smaller towns don't. But to Josh's point, if we're going to, as a town, hire consultants, um, then and we're going to abide by what those consultants, those comments that the consultants have made and satisfy those consultants, shouldn't the net of those consultants be that we receive approvals if we satisfy all their comments? And I think Jack, uh, Josh, that's what you're alluding to is we've satisfied them. They've spoken, they haven't spoken negatively about the project. They've said that we've accommodated all of their concerns and have addressed them um, adequately. Um, if inland wetlands is not going to hear what their consultants are saying and listen to them, then why are we paying the invoices? Is that what you're trying to get at? Well, I, I would say, you know, in a way, yes, but added, why wouldn't, uh, if we were forced to pay this money by another board and commission for that board and commission to do their service and that board and commission chooses not to use that service, well, then they can foot the bill rather than wait, you wasting the kids money. Well, what my concern is, is if I could piggyback on what Josh is saying is, is how many consultants can a, can another commission hire until they get the opinion that they're looking for 
as opposed to the expert opinion that they've already been given by the people that they hired? Well, I, I think you're subject to time limitations with any submission and time for any board or commission to make a decision, um, be it planning, zoning, or inland wetlands. There are rules and regulations for the length of public hearings and how long a public hearing can remain open. But Rob, I, I understand your concern that, you know, if mom says no, go ask dad. If dad says no, go ask grandma type scenario. Thank you, Paul. Um, well, that being said, there's a motion on the table. We can either choose to approve the motion or not approve the motion. And if we don't approve the motion, we can have a subsequent motion to table or to address them again in October or at another time. Or we can choose to have a conditional approval based upon um, successful passing at Inland Wetlands. So there's uh, a few ways we could do this. Do we want to modify the motion and have a conditional motion? Or do we just want to call the motion as, um, as originally indicated? I'll entertain either. I, I personally, I would say uh, as indicated and, you know. All right, so all those in favor? So be it. All those in favor of approving Trick House's Engineering LLC invoice the amount of thirty five hundred. All those opposed. Aye. Aye. I got two opposed. Did I hear anybody else? Aye. Three. Aye. Okay. Abs abstentions. It's Hearing unfortunate none. because as Josh pointed out they did complete the work. They did what they were asked to do. I already called the vote, so moved. It's been okay. Yeah. We need You're two right. other motions for Trink House and Davidson. We have Trink House's engineering's invoice in the amount of 22.87.50 that we need a motion on and Davidson Environmental's invoice of 81.25 we need a motion on. It's going to be the same motion and the same vote. So we need a motion. I motion that we table the balance of Trink Houses and Davison's invoices to the next meeting or a special meeting, should we have one, uh, and based upon results of inland wetlands and if they use the consultant's services that we are being charged for. I'll There's a motion that. on the table. Do I get a second? Second. Any discussion on that motion? Can I ask a point of clarification? The purchase order increases that's lower down on this list. Are those engineering services and plan review referring to the invoices that we're receiving? Because they're yes. not the same amount. One says 8126, one says 8125. Jack Butkiss, um, um, dollar difference. That uh, looking at the uh, amount, of it, that's a good question, Rob. Um, let's go through the packet. This is Davidson. <clears throat> It's environmental. Uh, I've got I've got to scroll over because it's hiding behind you. Eighty-one twenty-five would be the total. Okay, so the additional purchase order amount is not accurate, but that's okay. That's not a big we, deal. We can handle that. Yeah. Uh, on the other invoice for Trink House, the original purchase order amount was for four thousand dollars. It went up. $3,500, that's almost double. Yeah, and it, you know, as you may recall, the uh, the documents we got from Wetland said they, these are initial projections. They weren't quotations. They were, they were listed with very, you know, 
wiggly language as we don't know what we're going to get into till we get into it. So here's a starting point. Yeah, and that's the question that I raised at last month's meeting that required yes, clarifications. Yep. Because it's literally writing a blank check. Yep. And they doubled it. You know, I could understand if you went from $4,000 to $4,400, you know, a 10% increase. This is 90% increase, you know, like 95% increase. That's crazy. Now, in, in, fair, in fairness and to speak upon that, they were charged or asked by Inland Wetlands and so is Malone and McBroom to revise their documents several times and make several submissions. So there was a fair amount of work and maybe more than they originally thought. So in, in fairness, you know, and but that drives home my question and point of if we went above and beyond with their services, I don't mind paying for it. So as long as their services are used, we're not using their services as of yet. That's the main issue I have. Agreed. And Tecton Architects have done significant work to accommodate those suggestions and requirements the Trink House made. Exactly. Okay, so there's a motion on the table. Is there any other discussion? Let, did you have something? I was just wondering whether we had any guidance or precedence from council on something like this, but also realize that that would almost incur the amount of increase that we're looking at here anyway. Yeah, um, again, uh, I don't know what the nature of the agreement, Trink House or Davidson Environmental, what their contracts with the town or their uh, proposal for services says as far as um, how long till payments are due. I don't think we're saying right now that we're not paying them. I think what the motion Josh made was to table them until next meeting or a special meeting between this meeting and next meeting pending um, action by the Inland Wetlands yeah, Commission. Fair enough. Fair enough. So being their motion on the table, to table them until next meeting, that's what the motion is. Any other discussion? All those in favor of tabling them to the next meeting? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved. All right, Jack, does that do it for invoices? That's it for invoices. Next up are a request for purchase order for FSM services for 2000 to do those test pits that we spoke about a few minutes ago. Can we have an, a, a motion to approve? Um, well, I'll make a motion to approve something that we already paid for. I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you approve payment. Now this will be the, the a, a PO. Well, is the purchase payment order. Payment. Approved payment. This is just to issue the PO. Yeah. All right. There's a motion to issue the, the for the purchase order. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? So moved. And the next business is to uh, to modify the purchase orders for Trinkus in the amount of $3,500. And in the corrected amount for Davison as 2,625 additional dollars. Now we've, make, we've, had, we've had a motion to table the invoices. I'll make, a motion, a similar motion. I'll make a motion to table the purchase order increase, increases for Trink House and Davidson. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions? Hearing none, motion carries. Okay, Jack, that's it on invoices? Yes, sir. All right, any new business? I would just like to say that I personally would entertain a special meeting to approve those invoices um, should Inland Wetlands decide that the, all the reviews by all of the engineers, which came back favorable, 
would be their course of action. So I'll put that out there. We can see what happens, but I myself would have no problem having a quick 10 minute meeting or whatever it would be to approve invoices rather than waiting for these consultants to wait a few extra weeks. I support that. Yeah, I would support that too. I don't think it's correct to penalize them for um, the actions of their employer. However, I do recognize and support you know, your position that, look, if we pay for a service, you know, you, you, you hire an attorney, you listen to them. You don't listen to them. Well, you take the risk of bearing what the consequences. And unfortunately, these guys were hired. We listened to them. Um, the person that hired them chose not to listen right now. And they're, you know, bearing the consequence of it. Well, I okay, think any other clear, new business? I think it also bears mentioning that Tecton went through hoops to accommodate these requests and they should be acknowledged for that. Yeah, Tecton, Malona McBroom, CES, the entire design team, along with Arcadis and ONG, um, really have, um, you know, look, at the end of the day, it made for a better design. There are some good tweaks um, made to the project. It was all for good cause. And, you know, Tecton and the whole design team embraced that ideology instead of being combative. Um, they really worked collaboratively with the consultants that they were given. And, you know, we, we would just hope the same would come from all boards and commissions um, working within the town. Paul, well, thank you. I, I should have said the entire design team. I appreciate the fact that you made that clarification. Oh, that's okay. It's kind of near and dear to my heart. <laughs> All right. Any other new business? Public comment. Catherine, do you have any hands raised on uh, anything? No, I don't see anything. Do you, Dan? Hello. We even have anybody here from the public. No, I don't think so. I think everyone's involved. Okay. Okay, no public comment. Next regularly scheduled meeting, October 20th, 2020. Okay, any other business? Hearing no other business, move to adjourn the meeting. You don't need a meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good night.